Well, thank you for everybody. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and talk to you about Raspberry Pi. I feel somewhat overwhelmed after Slow Mo's performance, which is, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, how do you follow that? Right, anyway, um, before I get going on today's talk, what I'd like to do is actually introduce you to a friend of mine. Um, this is uh, Babbage. Uh, Babbage the Bear, and he is the mascot of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Now, we have some of the brightest minds in the country, I believe, in this audience, and Babbage is looking for a like-minded friend. He is looking for people who consider themselves to be innovators, creators, maybe a bit of a science or an engineering background amongst you. So I, I have a number of Babbage's here, which I'm going to throw out into the audience, okay? And if you feel that you are like-minded, like Babbage, and please hold on to him, um, if not, pass him along, you know, throw him about, that's absolutely fine. But I'm looking for, you know, sort of four people who are going to be Babbage's friend. And we'll come back to that before the end of the talk. So uh, we'll start. There you go. Off we go. Let's see you throw them about, see where we get to. There you go. Right. <clears throat> so um, I thought I'd start today's talk by asking you all a question. Uh, today's May the 17th. And I wonder if May the 17th has any significance for any of you. You know, maybe it's a birthday, an anniversary of a special event. Anybody? No? Okay. Excellent. Right. Well, actually, May the 17th is a very, very significant day in our history. And you may not be aware of this, but it was um, a whole 169 years ago that the rubber band was invented. <laughs> All right. Maybe not quite so significant. But... Um, I think rubber bands are really interesting, okay? They're amazing sort of versatile tools. And of course, the most common use for a rubber band is you'll put it around some envelopes or some packaging. But take a rubber band and put that into the hands of a child, and with a bit of creativity and a bit of imagination, they'll come up with a whole variety of uses for that rubber band. Um, of course, they might tie a weight to it and make a toy like a yo-yo. Um, they might use it as a belt drive in, in some way. Um, they might put it around a, a shoebox, cut a hole in it, and make a musical instrument. Slow mo, maybe you can try that one later. Um, <laughs> uh, but of course, the mischievous amongst you will always remember that the best use of an elastic band is the catapult. Oh, there you go, there's a fail. <laughs> there you go. So, it was also on this day, in 1901, whilst exploring a shipwreck uh, near Greece, that the Antikythera mechanism uh, was, was discovered. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Antikythera mechanism is an ancient computational device. It dates from around 70 BC. Um, it's a bit of a, like a watch mechanism. And the purpose of, of the Antikythera mechanism was for predicting solar eclipses. It tracks the phases of the moon and the sun, um, and it sort of uh, it's a, predicts, predicts solar eclipses. Now, the remarkable thing about the Antikythera mechanism is that it was incredibly advanced for its time, incredibly complex watch mechanism. And the likes of it were not seen for around another 1,500 years. So it's probably the equivalent of finding 747 100 years before the Wright brothers ever flew. So at this point, you must be thinking, why is this guy from Raspberry Pi talking about elastic bands and ancient computing devices? Well, it is actually the combination of these two things that sums up the spirit of Raspberry Pi. You take something which is incredibly simple, like a, raspberry, uh, like a rubber band, and you try and repurpose that and reuse that in different ways. And you take a computing device. So what we want to do with the Raspberry Pi Foundation is take a simple computer, and we're going to put that in the hands of children and inspire them and encourage their imagination to go off and explore that technology and become the digital creators of tomorrow. Now, there may, some of you in this audience may have heard of Raspberry Pi. In fact, some of you may have taken a leap of faith and actually gone and bought a Raspberry Pi. Um, but some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. So um, I've got one here. This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a credit-sized sort of small computer. Um, it runs the Linux operating system, and it's based on technology which you would find in your mobile phone. So similar sort of things to a smartphone or, or a, a tablet. Um, it has USB connectivity, so you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse. You can plug it into your television um, to get the display out. It has a small SD card, the sort of thing that you would find in your camera. 
um, which stores the Linux operating system, and it has connectivity for the, uh, for the internet as well. So in some ways, not that remarkable. But this device costs $35, and it's incredibly powerful. It will do almost the equivalent of everything that you would imagine that a desktop computer will do. The other remarkable thing about this is it's an open platform. It's a, a computer that you get to program. You get to decide what it does and how you're going to purpose it, what problems that you're going to solve with the Raspberry Pi. So our mission with the Raspberry Pi is to take that device, put that in the hands of children, and encourage them, uh, inspire them, let them express their creativity. We want them to become innovators, to be creators. We don't want them just to consume content from the internet. We want them to understand how technology works so that they can make a significant contribution in our society going forward. So when we set off on this mission, um, we, 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 we kind of thought about how many of these devices do we think we would actually sell. And we thought that we would sell maybe 10,000, and that would be great. But over the last two years, we have been completely overwhelmed by the uptake and success of the Raspberry Pi. In two years, we have sold over three million devices. And what's surprising about this is the community that has grown up around Raspberry Pi and the innovation uh, that comes from that community. And I'd like to take some time to just show you some of the things that are going on in the Raspberry Pi community and what, they've been, and what people are working on. So the first example that I wanted to show you was young Alex. Now, here's a classic sort of use that we thought the Raspberry Pi would how it would be used. Alex is sitting in his bedroom, he's plugged it into his TV, and he's running an application called Scratch. Scratch is a very simple graphical environment that teaches children the basics of programming. And whilst it's very simple and very intuitive and very easy to use, it actually teaches kids the fundamental sort of constructs of how computing works. Um, now, with using Scratch, with around sort of half an hour, well, within sort of two minutes, the child can actually make something happen. It's very interactive, and with about half an hour, they can write their first game. So there's an amazing sort of engagement for that child. He actually creates his own game in half an hour. And gaming is actually one of the best ways to engage children in programming if you want to teach them around technology. And a really good example of that is a program called Minecraft. I don't know if any of you here have ever played with Minecraft at all, but Minecraft is a very, very popular game uh, for children aged between about 8 and 14. My girls are on it all the time, and I can never get them off. But we have a version of Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi that allows you to modify it. You can change the behavior. So you write code in Python alongside your game, and you can actually create new functionality and mod the game. So if you want to create a teleporter, you can do that. If you want to create a treasure detector, you can do that in the Minecraft world. And one of the best examples we have of a project is when you walk around the landscape, you leave a trail of flowers behind you. OK, that's quite hippie. The boys get a bit bored, but they modified the code. So what they then go back is change that trail of flowers to a trail of dynamite, and then go and ignite the end of it and watch the chaos that ensues. <laughs> but it's not just boys who do this. Actually, we find, if we look in the community, that girls are very interested in technology at this age. And the example I have there is young Amy. Now, Amy's 13 years old, and last year she stood up um, having written her first project on a, on a Raspberry Pi, she stood up a, a community event called a Raspberry Jam. And she presented to 40 people at age 13 on her program, which is called The Game of Life. And The Game of Life is a classic sort of game. It's based on cell reproduction and cell survival. So there's a great example how young people can actually get in, involved in technology and actually pr learn to program and use technology. Now, if you want to widen the participation, you want to get more people to uh, understand how technology works, then a good way of doing that is to find something that they already have some affinity to. So, Slomar, I couldn't believe the lineup here, mate. This was absolutely perfect. Okay, so music is a great way to engage kids in technology, engage, engage kids in programming. The first example I have is a beatbox. Not quite the same level, but it is a beatbox. But this beatbox is made out of vegetables. So you have turnips, carrots, swedes, etc. And each of those vegetables is wired up to the Raspberry Pi with a capacitive touch. So when you touch those vegetables, they play a different drum machine sound. So you can make your own drum machine out of vegetables. How cool is that? 
The second example is the work by a gentleman, of, a gentleman by the name of Sam Aaron, based here in Cambridge. And he has come up with uh, an application called Sonic Pi. And Sonic Pi allows you to program music. You can compose and play music through writing code. And he came into our office quite recently. He had an example of about 10 lines of code. And he had recreated an entire new order song in 10 lines of code on the Raspberry Pi. So great ways to get kids into te technology through music. But possibly one of the most inspiring projects that I've seen over the last two years is the work of Dave Ackerman. Now, Dave Ackerman is a keen amateur weather balloonist. Okay? And Dave was watching the Red Bull Challenge last year. You might remember this. This is where Red Bull got Felix Gambartner, the Austrian, to put on a spacesuit, go up to 39 kilometers, and jump off a of platform and free fall down to Earth and then parachuted down to the ground. So Dave was watching this and thought he could go one better. So he took Babbage the bear, and uh, he opened up the back of him, put a Raspberry Pi in the back of Babbage the bear with a camera module, strapped him to a weather balloon, took him up to 39 and a half kilometers in space, so 500 meters more than Felix, <laughs> and ejected him from the balloon. Now, you'll see in the video later on, sadly, Babbage's uh, parachute didn't quite open. Um, <laughs> so he did free fall all the way down to Earth, but he's quite soft and he bounces, and, and, and he was fine. But the, the important part here, the really, really important part that I want to get across, is what an amazing science project that is in the realms of the budget of a school. If you, you know, you, could, you can foresee a school, take a Raspberry Pi, put a camera on that, strap it to a weather balloon, take that up to the high atmosphere, and they can take their own pictures of space. And you will see the curvature of the Earth, and you will see the atmosphere disappearing into space, all on a few hundred pounds. How amazing is that? Another great way of how cheap uh, computing technology can underpin science is an example which is around for, for the biologists among you, which is if you take the camera module and you turn that into an infrared camera, what you can do is look at the health of plants. Now, we all know that trees are green. You know, they're, they're basically, they reflect the green light. And they absorb the leaves, and the, chloro, uh, the photosynthesis process absorbs the light from the blue spectrum and the red spectrum. Now, the interesting thing is, when the tree becomes dehydrated, when it's stressed, the, what light, the, the wavelength of light that it absorbs actually changes. So if you look at trees through an infrared camera, you can detect the health of the tree simply by looking at the image. So again, an amazing way that low-cost computing can basically underpin science. So within Raspberry Pi, okay, we have this amazing creative community that are finding all different uses uh, for, 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 for you know, the, the Raspberry Pi computer. And it's not just here in the UK. We have jams and opportunities where people go along to Saturday clubs and after-school clubs. But we're also seeing Raspberry Pi being used across the world. We're seeing it being used in ICT suites for all-girls schools in Afghanistan. We're seeing it being used in, uh, in, in sub-Saharan Africa, where the cost of PCs and, and ICT equipment is prohibitive. They take a very low-cost Raspberry Pi, and they're learning the basics of computing. And from this community, we have this wide range and creativity. And we're tapping in to this wonderful sort of digital maker scene. And we're seeing examples from things like uh, weather stations um, that also detect air pollution and measure air pollution. Um, we've seen some great examples of digital photography, both time lapse and high speed photography. Um, so you can actually see and capture the motion of water droplets. And we've really seen, and we've seen some wacky ones as well. The final example of there is a robot that is actually controlled from a headset that is me measuring your brain waves, your alpha waves, and you actually have to train yourself to control the robot. So a huge diversity uh, of projects. Now, I've got one left, so uh, I think you, you guys only had. So here's the challenge for you guys. Okay, I've uh, thrown out five raspberry. Uh, pie bears, uh, uh, Babbage the Bears, out into the audience. And I hope he's got a buddy and a friend. Now, the challenge is, for the five of you who've got theirs, at the next break, come and see me, and I'm going to give you a Raspberry Pi. 
And I want you to come up with a creative use, a creative project, and I want you to come back and tell us about that project and what you've done. And as a final bit of inspiration, I'm going to play a short video now that shows some of the projects that have happened with Raspberry Pi over the last two years.